In a previous video, you may have heard me talk about meditation and how it's helped me understand more about not just the world, but myself as well. And through meditation, I've had many revelations, and I wanted to share a little bit about what I've learned about fear. Now, in its most basic form, fear is not, and love is. All other emotions are derived from these two. And yet, by the same token, at their essence, love and fear are the same. Because there is nothing that separates us. The whole world, the whole universe, was designed to bring us together. The only thing stopping that from happening is us and our minds. Fear and love are the same, and when I say they're the same, I mean they come from the same place, and that is a place of irrationality. Now when I say irrational, I don't mean irrational is bad. Irrational is just what irrational means, without reason. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Unwavering, unconditional love? That's irrational, because that's one who continues to cherish and enjoy someone or something despite that someone or something causing great harm and or discomfort. That's like after someone stabs you in the chest, you want to give them a big hug and a kiss. Unyielding, incessant fear. That's irrational because that's someone who continues to run away and hide despite there being no danger. That's like if you were to stay home on a cloudless day because you were afraid of being struck by lightning. Most fear often takes one of four guises. Anxieties, hate, panic, and doubt. The thing about fear is it comes from the root of yourself. Meaning you have to dig it up, pull it out, and plant the seeds of happiness and compassion. All of these things, fear and its compatriots, are a choice. Here's why. They're a choice because fear is us grabbing on to certain things, like ideas and concepts we hold about ourselves, about the world, what other people think of us, what we think of other people, etc. Fear is grabbing on to those things and holding them. And over time, we grab on to more things and hold on to more things, and naturally that starts to weigh us down. And we can continue to grab on to things and hold more things, and grab on to things and hold more things, and that's eventually going to weigh us down so much we can barely move, both physically and mentally. Love, on the other hand, is letting go. Think of the thoughts of someone who's afraid for a second. I'm so scared. What's going to happen to me? How do I get out of this situation? Fear is a very egocentric emotion. But it's easy to get caught up in fear because it's almost like a cycle, like a cyclical prison, like a hamster or gerbil in a, one of those wheels. And fear is also easy to grab hold of, speaking of things to grab hold of, right? Because fear is right there in front of your face. Fear is right there in front of your face. And it's so loud, too. Fear and negativity are so loud, right? You can hear it so prominently. If it were a person, if fear were a person, fear would literally be a person who walks right up in front of you right up, gets right up in front of your face and goes <laughs> How can you look past that? Because it's right there in front of your face. <laughs> so loud, right? But you know, you're smart. There's more to the world than just someone right in front of your face going Because <laughs> if someone were to do that, you would just step back, walk around them, or smack them. And the other thing compounding the problem with fear is that it's coming from our mind. And 
we often view our mind as our self because we think our self is a trusted source. <laughs> our mind can play tricks on us sometimes. And that's what fear is. Fear is literally your mind getting in front of your face and going... But after a while, that can be quite tedious, right? Nothing but... That's why I've also found fear is boring and repetitive. And it's up to us to look past that and see more of the world. Now, speaking of more of the world, I know there are pockets in the world where terrible, horrible things are happening to people. And I'm by no means trying to insinuate that those things that are happening to those people are a state of mind. What's happening to those people is not good, and they are living a terrible life almost every day. But what I'm getting at is this. Those of us who are facing these fears, and after we conquer those fears, that opens us up to not just receiving love, but giving love as well. And when we're opened up to receiving and giving love, there's so much we can change about the world because we're no longer thinking for ourselves. It might be easy to understand and digest, but then it comes to the part of how can I break free from these cycles? How can I look past what's right in front of my face? I can tell you a few things, but these things I've found have worked for me. They might not work for you, so it's important to find what works best for you. I often suggest meditation or some or prayer or some sort of introspection because that helps you see those patterns. That helps you get down to the root, dig it and pull it out. And maybe after a while, I don't know what a while is, maybe a few weeks, a few months of meditation, maybe you think of some sort of mantra. I found this helps too, some sort of mantra that helps you conquer these fears. And the mantra can be something as simple as, I renounce these fears and anxieties because they are not helping me in my path. Something along those lines. Another thing I can suggest is, practicing gratitude. Practice gratitude because not only are you helping yourself, you're helping others as well by sharing how they've helped you develop and grow as a person. Maybe every so many weeks you make some sort of list of things you're grateful for. So that way you can see it as well as mentally. Yeah. Another thing I might suggest is just watch and listen to more comedy. Seriously. Do you know how good laughing is for you? Look it up. And this next thing is a tried and true thing that you probably hear often, but it does work. Exercise. It's not just good for your body, it's good for your mind as well. But, most importantly, one of the best things you can do to break free from yourself, to dig to the root and pull up that fear, is go with your flow. Not go with the flow, go with your flow. And by that, I mean we often judge ourselves based on the expectations of what we should be doing, what we should be feeling, how we should be acting, and even what we should be thinking, instead of enjoying what's around us at this moment. If you're in a job that you don't like, if you're in a relationship that's not fulfilling, or if you're doing anything that's not making you happy and fulfilled and being free to do what you want to do, fucking change it.